or just the agenda. Good evening, everyone. I call to order the special meeting of the Victoria City Council. Uh, today's date is 17 October uh, 2019. Uh, this meeting is uh, specifically to talk about the local option sales tax. Uh, with that, uh, Dana, do you want to start this? or? I can do that, Mayor. Mayor, members of the Council, thank you for being here with us this evening. Um, as you know, uh, on Monday, so just this past Monday on the 14th, we did the first of a three-part series that will allow us to take a deep dive into local option sales tax. And so on Monday, we talked a little bit about an overview, an informational overview, provided information on what local option sales tax is, potential projects that it could be funded for, what the process would entail for imposing or enacting, a local option sales tax and then we talked about different cities throughout the state and in the metro that are using uh, are, that are in that are have enacted a local option sales tax and what types of projects they're using that for and so the second part of our process was to invite the public or is to invite the public so um, our business community as well as residents, perhaps even visitors, to come and talk to us and provide input. So this is, you had your, your informational where you're learning, now this is your listening session, and then in December on the 16th, you'll get together and have a policy discussion, and we'll walk you through, through that in December on whether or not, um, based on what you've learned and what you've heard from the public, if this is a policy that you wanna pursue for our community, and if so, what would you want that revenue to fund? So with that, we haven't prepared anything but uh, for this evening, because this is a listening session. But with that, I just want to point out, um, we've kind of put the materials, the same materials that we had in the 14th um, on this agenda as well. So anybody who wants to see that as a reminder, um, we do have a pretty in-depth, we'll call it a white paper that just gives a lot of good information about local option sales tax and a lot of resources uh, to different papers and, and research that's been done on that um, in the state and then from different resources around um, the nation. We've also included the slide deck, so if anybody missed that presentation or that meeting on the 14th, they can go through and look at that. Um, and then we just have a brief staff report that gives an executive summary of what we're doing tonight. So with that, I'll take any questions. Otherwise, we can go into um, public comment at your will. All right, and the point tonight is really not for the council to discuss this so much, uh, more so just to listen to residents and businesses? Mayor, that's correct. Okay. Um, gentlemen, I assume somebody wants to address the council? I just came because I wanted to learn something. So I, I wasn't <laughs> here on Monday, so I wasn't quite sure, you know. Jeff three. Yeah. And Mayor, members of the council, I'm happy to ask any questions. So if, the, if um, you want that form, if you think that the form would be more productive as a Q&A, I'm certainly um, happy to try to field any questions that come up 
from people who are present tonight. Yeah, that's fine. I, there's no standard format or requirement here. The the point is is to have a discussion, right? The uh, let me provide a little context. Uh, when Dana came on board, uh, uh, she and I spoke about this a number of times. Um, and one of, one of the things that I asked her was the there's various requests from business owners, property owners, um, uh, to do improvements in the downtown business uh, district. And uh, uh, when I was discussing this with Dana, this was a number of months ago, it was, uh, uh, yeah, there's always if uh, limits on the money, and then there's always re more requests than we have funds. And I wanted to look at what are the options that we have to fund some of this other than just going to TIFFs and always going to the resident, uh, residential homeowner. So uh, I don't have any, uh, uh, personally, I don't have any preconceived notion or or uh, view on what's the best way to do this, but I do think it's a it's a discussion that the city has to have. Uh, business owners and property owners want certain things done. Um, uh, residents want other things done. We can't afford to do everything, so we have to look at various options. And so uh, this is one uh, potential option, whether or not uh, uh, there's support for it, I guess we'll find out. Then that's part of the purpose of having these open sessions to get feedback. So. Uh, with that, uh, Dana, do you have any uh, questions or counsel? Uh, any anything that we'd like to uh, uh, get out and discuss briefly? Would it be helpful if we just went? I know you have the slide deck here, and I'm wondering if it might be helpful for the audience just to take a few minutes and talk through local option sales tax, what it means, and that sort of thing. I, it's looking like the crowd that's here is looking here for more education. Yes. Well, there's a few questions and stuff that I know that people have voiced to me that couldn't make it to the meeting and stuff tonight. Okay. Um, it was more so it, just it, if you wouldn't mind so yeah, that we yeah, can get sure, you absolutely. the uh, raise the question for me. It doesn't. Yeah, matter. Uh, Mitch Peterson, me and my wife own Seek Eye Care here in town. Um, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a step back from a lot of it because as a medical device company, we don't have a lot of sales tax to contribute. So um, we're tax exempt with a lot of the things. Uh, biggest concerns uh, joining like the I'm a member of the VBOA um, at some of the meetings. A lot of people were going to try to be here tonight, but just scheduling conflicts and whatnot. Um, I don't see much opposition to the, the sales tax. Uh, most people that the discussions I've had think it's a, a really, really good way to potentially move forward with some of the projects that we've been talking about forever. I mean, everybody knows parking and the typical stuff, the ADA compliance and things downtown. Uh, the biggest concerns that were vocalized were just how do we have input in the future about what the money is going to be used for or if we have any. Is this just something that's going to hit the, you know, the balance sheet and it'll be sent out however needed? Um, or, you know, is it going to be something that potentially could subsidize the 13 and a half acres? I mean, there's, there's, you guys have a lot of irons in the fire. So that's, that's the biggest clarification that we were just wondering um, before a lot of the business owners kind of put the stamp of approval on it and everything. Um, if if and where do we have a say where the funding is actually going to go because obviously downtown parking court parking is still uh, an issue to us so, so hold hold that thought for yeah. a second the the local option sales tax that's the one that has to go and be voted on and approved by the residents that's the one the council has basically exclusive control over but only in the sense that when it goes to a vote we have to list the specific uses for those funds, right? And then the voters, the residents, get to vote on that and decide whether or not each item is approved or not, right? So that's how those funds would be controlled should the council move forward with something along these lines. Is that correct? Mayor, members of the council, yes, that is correct. So the statute requires that we can have no more than five projects be um, funded through, at, at one time, be funded through a local option sales tax. And so if you had certain projects that you were going to bring bringing forward, you get your legislative approval. Once that happens, you take it to the voters. For each project, you would have to list, a, list it separately. So for example, parking, for example, trail connections, for example, entrance monuments. The voters, the, those would have to be three separate right. referendum questions. So the voters <laughs> could approve all, none, or a combination. Okay, so they have to be specific, just if I jump in, if yep. you don't mind. Uh, do they have to be specified projects? I've uh, looked at, I saw your sheet and everything that you guys have put together. That was excellent information. Um, but the some of it just seemed like it was, you know, the Elk River was one, for example. My sister-in-law lives there, so I kind of reached out to her. I was like, hey, do you even care about this as a resident of Elk River? 
she said they don't even notice it. Businesses don't really notice it, um, and it's improving. But when I looked at their guidelines, they just had put you know, infrastructure improvements, parking. So is it a better option to have you know, a very specific, like mm -hmm. this is the dollar amount, this is the project, or is it just parking in general? Go ahead. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, Mitch, um, that's an excellent question. So part of the legislative approval, we have to say, here are the projects that we're going to fund. And we take those projects and we say we have to basically draft a bill and seek legislative approval for that. Okay. There are some specific criteria that has to be met in order for that approval to be given. Um, and it includes a very specific capital project. Like we couldn't just say, we've got infrastructure needs in the city and we're gonna use this money to fund those needs. So we have to tie that to a very specific project and the new legislation that came out in 2019 requires that project to have regional significance. How do you define that? It's pretty, it's not black and white, it's very gray. So there's still some risk there where the legislature has, um, can make a decision if they don't approve it, you could be left in the dark in terms of why that's not approved. But um, the statutory changes that just occurred this last year have attempted to make the criteria more understandable and clear um, so cities understand the risks going into making that, that request. But it does have to be tied to a very specific project. And do the do dollars have to, have to be identified? Yes, the dollars have to be identified for each project. So with that line item, so if you were gonna, let's use the parking garage for an example, or a trail connection, it would have to be a specific trail connection, the specific garage, with a specific dollar amount tied to each question. And then we also have to total that. So the total revenue that would be expected to be raised by that. In addition to that, this, if it's all approved, the state statutes require us as a city to post, create a web page and post that information online so it's very transparent to the public on what, how much are you expecting to raise, where's the, linking them to the resolution, when when do we expect that to, we'll call it sunset, um, and we also have to link to the forms for use tax for individuals to report, because individuals self-report use tax. So they would sunset at some point? Um, yes, Council Member Gregory, Mayor, <laughs> members of the Council. Um, these aren't evergreen taxes. So a local option sales tax by statute has to expire and it's very specific language that says when you raise the revenue to cover that expenditure, it has to expire. So if you're bonding, which we would be bonding to do these things, we would know when that would go away and when that, those funds would be complete, that capital project would be completely paid for. Um, so there would be a specific sunset date. Would and, you, oh, I'm sorry, go and I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. The other thing is once things expire, if you had just had one project and it expired, you have, the state statute says you have to have a one year cooling off period before you can institute a new local option sales tax. So could, uh, could these things be set up such that you uh, don't bond for it, but you raise the money first, and once you have sufficient funds, the project moves forward? To avoid the whole point of having to bond and take on debt. Mayor, members of the council, I'm not quite sure how the mechanics of that would work, but I could certainly look into that. Yeah, because I, in, in my head, I was thinking, uh, uh, should the council come up with something and decide to go to the public with this, mm -hmm. my thought was specifically to avoid having to borrow money, right? That we would raise funds for a specific project and when we had sufficient funds, even if we said, okay, we only want this to raise 75% of the funds and then we'll, we'll cover what, what, it, what else it is, but that when we hit that point, we had those funds, we would do the project at that point. Sure. To avoid the borrowing costs and, yeah. and the other costs to the taxpayers. Uh, Mayor, mm -hmm. uh, the, Dollar amounts we saw for the city of Victoria if you had a quarter of a percent or half a percent, it's not going to accumulate huge amounts of money on, on an annual basis. So if you don't bond, 
at some point in the early stages, uh, nothing's going to happen for 20 or 30 years. So, I mean, the idea is that if there is a parking ramp or if there is a trail, that it would be available sometime in the next five years. Right. I don't disagree with that. The, so, but part of the part of the process that I think the council would go through, or at least I'd like to see the council go through, would be to uh, do a combination. Maybe we have a higher sales tax up front so that we get raise money faster and do the project faster, and then maybe we agree to, okay, we'll borrow 50% of the money. Um, uh, those are all discussions we'll get into if we ever start talking about projects specifically. And if, if it functionally won't work, right, because to your point it takes 20 years, well, then that option's not viable. But I want to look at those options to see whether or not we can find something there. And I, I, I think, uh, uh, one second, I'd like to contrast this because I think your original question, and I forget, the, was it the business subsidy or business districts? That, special service sorry, district. Thank you, special services district. I think that's more what you were originally kind of speaking to. On that, the businesses have to agree. It doesn't go to a vote to the taxpayers. But in that case, I think that's where the, the business owner, the special service district, and the business in prop is it the property owners? Or the property, business, owners the property owners primarily. Property owners. The property owners then would set up what uh, projects they want to do, and they would direct where that money goes. So I think that's that's yeah. kind of a significant difference between the two different approaches, yeah. and maybe that's part of what why I wanted to start having these discussions to find out, does that make more sense? Does this make more sense? Or are both of these uh, not very viable options? Well, until we start talking about them, we don't know. So Yeah, you've answered the majority of my questions I was going to ask with a lot of that stuff and if there's an expiration to the point, because any of the projects that a lot of the business owners in town are kind of pushing for um, would have to be bonded. You know, that's that's is this money going to be, you know, ran for two to three years where this tax is going to sunset? And then are we going to look for a bond? So are we looking at a timetable of with construction five years from now before something's technically built if it is a parking structure or, you know, it, it, it just timeline? It's it's a very broad option. Um, but I know that I'll let you guys start the discussion up is really good. You guys are going between, so I'll sit back down. Um, but the biggest thing is that I know that majority of the business owners are for it. Um, I like the fact that it's very narrow window. The thing that concerns me is how many of these projects will we have? Is it by January, Dana, that we have to have everything put in? So say a parking garage or trails or anything along those lines, is it feasible to even have these bids put in place for five options for this tax or are we looking at 2020 already for this dependent to go through? So I'll sit down after that. Yeah, uh, go ahead. So mayor, members of the council, just to kind of piggyback on that comment that Mitch made. Um, so the reason we're talking about this now and the timeline that we're, we're here now having this conversation is again, the, the statute is very prescriptive of what a city must do and if they're gonna consider a local option sales tax. So with that, just um, for the benefit of those who may not have heard things on the 14th, um, on Monday when we talked about what the process is, uh, we have to pass a resolution, the city council has to pass a resolution with a whole bunch of stuff in it that basically says, here's, here's the projects that we're looking at doing, the amount tied to it, and a whole bunch of other stuff in it. And we, the last day for us to do that would be to, in order to get on the 2020 ballot for a referendum, the last day for us to do that would be January 27th, our council meeting on that night. And that is because for the we, 2020 election. For the 2020 referendum, because by the 31st of each legislative session, we have to let the tax committee chair know of our intent to seek special legislation. And then, of course, we'll want to hit the ground running with doing that. Um, and once we get. Um, once we get legislative approval, then it goes to the referendum, to the voter referendum, and we only can do this in a general election year. And so for us, if we're, if we are, um, if we miss, we this, miss year, this window, you're, you're really waiting two years. And, and that might be okay. That might be, if it feels fast for the community, if it feels fast for you, that's totally fine, um, but we just want to make sure you know why why we have the deadlines that were up. They're very prescriptive in state statute. 
Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, just for order of magnitude, the state tax research um, division did some estimates for us and uh, provided us with sales tax data for the, for the entire city. And so from, this is an average from 2013 to 2017, it's 27.6 million. And so for order of magnitude to council member votes earlier point and mayor your point about um, taking time to, to save up, um, we just wanted to provide a, an order of magnitude, a quarter percent would raise just under $70,000 in a year, um, a half percent, 138,000 and 1% to 276,000. So, so it just, it, it, if we were to see, this comes with both, it's a, both a blessing and a curse. If, if we were to do 1%, okay, that's not a lot on most purchases. Most people probably wouldn't notice it, but it would take us four years to basically get a, a million dollars in the bank, right? Um, part of the problem with that, and this is what I've struggled with when I've, I keep going through this, is what's 1% gonna do? Is that gonna make you uh, uh, lose competition to other cities? that don't have a 1% sales tax. And then to council member vote's point, if we wanted to raise funds quickly, for example, if we wanted to target the 13.5 acres for the infrastructure, I've seen estimates of what, four and a half million dollars. Let's say we did 2%, I'm just making it up for points of discussion. So that'd be, yeah, we'd get more than half a million a year. In four years, we could get $4 million, but now it's 2%, are people gonna start seeing that? Is that now gonna start causing our businesses problems and competition issues? So, and that's the, the trade-off here. And I don't know what the right answer is, and I'm not suggesting we would, would do that. But this is part of, of uh, I think, part of what we have to have in the discussion to say how quickly can we do this? Uh, can we avoid raising money if we can't, or I'm sorry, can we avoid borrowing money if we can't avoid borrowing money? Uh, can we find some happy medium uh, where we don't disadvantage the city or the businesses? but yet we don't put the full burden um, uh, on just the, the residential property taxes either. Um, so I, I don't have any answers, it's just open discussion. So have the business owners talked about uh, what this would do as far as your business in, in your uh, revenue? Do you think it would hurt you? Absolutely. But, go ahead. A penny business these days. <laughs> So, and to answer that question for myself, um, uh, Jeff, just for the I'm Jeff Byrne. I own Cabin Fever and Steiger Lake Stores. Um, for us, everything in my store, because I'm retail, is sold online. Um, now, South Dakota had their lawsuit where the federal government now they lost, where all states now have to charge sales tax. The problem with that is, which we still see, is the enforcement of that rule. So we still get online sales of huge dollar items, mostly firearms uh, purchased. They have to be um, still sent to us for transfer. But like on a $3,000 shotgun, which is not uncommon, 1% is a lot of money. Mm. Not 1%, but now they're still not collecting the whole 7.38, whatever. So, yeah. so you're talking 8.5% on $3,000 is a lot of money, so people can say, I can order it online, have it shipped to you, pay the shipping, pay your transfer fee, and I still save a few hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So in my business, it is affected. And I think for the most part, because a lot of my customers, um, it's an extra income ex uh, that they have to spend on sporting goods, a lot of them might not really notice it. But it is a, it is a difference. And when people start looking at comparison between here and another store, um, fleet farm down the road, things like that, it affects us. Now, I started to make a list. I started looking at businesses in town. Um, a lot of the other retail type businesses, not restaurants, um, bars, things like that, are clothing stores. So they don't charge tax. So they don't have to worry about it. So there, a lot of the business, there's insurance offices, financial offices, um, things like that don't Services aren't taxed. Correct. So I look at, for problem. me, for being retail, you know, looking at the volume that I do per year, I mean, I'm outside the deep and I laugh. We're Victoria East, so we're kind of out of the downtown deal. Um, <laughs> we get affected by more, and I feel like I end up paying for private gain downtown that I didn't get. Hang on a second, hold that thought. 
Do we know, do we have anything that can tell us how much <clears throat> the businesses in Victoria are actually tax, tax exempt versus those that would pay a sales tax? I tried to figure, I thought about a third of the businesses are not just trying to Don't pay go sales. through and trying to look at businesses, that's what I guessed. Yeah, Mayor, members of the council, I'd have to look. I, I don't have that data right now. I'd have to look to see if we would have access to that data. And a service district would be different because every property owner would contribute a little? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, a service district is different because um, it's a very defined boundary area. Mm -hmm. So if you were to enact a local option sales tax, it's enacted for the whole city. Mm -hmm. A service district would be a very very defined geographical area um, and then the only revenue the people who the revenue is coming from very specific types of property and it's commercial property industrial property or vacant land that is zoned commercial or industrial but at least that way it, uh, under that scenario the businesses would be able to target that money to the projects they wanted and it wouldn't have necessarily the same kind of an impact that Jeff's talking about in the sales tax. Because in, if I'm understanding this right, just for sake of discussion, if you take all of what is considered downtown, east, west, and, and the central core, if you will, and you did that, the, those properties would each contribute, but they also get to decide where that money would be spent for whatever business activities or improvement activities, correct? So what's the what's the governance model on that? So do you do you get a committee? Does the city council decide with input from businesses? And and basically what we're doing is we're it's the tax is the same. You're gonna shift it from the consumer to the business. That's I mean uh, correct. Well that's part of it. Also what and excuse me, one thing just while you're on that. Mm -hmm. So my I have a few questions, and one of them is, is you talk about the parking is kind of what speared this on. So who's going to benefit from the, the different parking? The downtown businesses. Mm -hmm. The consumers are going to have to pay for this. Now, I don't see many businesses from Victoria here kind of, and they might have been at some of the other meetings, but it, it seems like they're busy they seem to be busy it's the consumers complaining about the parking not the businesses and you guys hear the complaints maybe from the businesses the businesses seem to be somewhat busy enough that they're i mean otherwise the business owners should be up here complaining that we need more parking we need more parking um, i'm not doing enough volume or business to substantiate my business because consumers can't get here um, we come into town every friday night for our date night and it is. I mean, most of the time it's at 710 by the time I can get out of work and get here, and we end up parking down there. And so when it's nice out, it's fine. But when it's the dead of winter, my wife will not walk from here to Whiskey Rye or uh, School of Wise or anything else. She just won't do it. We end up going to another community to eat dinner. And that's what happens when businesses are busy. So that's one of the questions I have is, are we building more parking is it still, are we still going to be in the same thing? That's one question I have. Next question is, technically by city ordinance, how many parking spots are we behind for what the ordinance says? Now, I know every, you guys can give exceptions, but when I built my building, there was an ordinance that said X amount of parking per square feet, and I had to build it, and I had to have enough room. Otherwise, I could have built a bigger building than what I have. I could have created more rental revenue and been fine so that's one question i have how many are we behind if we build a parking ramp how many will that give us are we still going to be way behind uh, you know so it seems like do we have a parking plan or what this tax would go for if it is the ramp um how expensive is it and like you said you know, 275000 a year really doesn't pay off a ramp very fast. No, a ramp's going to be $8 million bucks downtown. And then maintenance, everything else gets expensive. So it seems like we're, to me, we're putting the cart before the horse a little bit. I know you're on a timeline to get in by the general for the 2020. Well, that's if we do the sales tax. It's different. Correct. Right. 
So, but I, I think in, in, in one of the other things in which Tom and I have talked before, it is somewhat unfair to us other businesses outside the central business district. I don't get my parking lot plowed. I don't get mine maintained by the city. I have to pay for that. So the cities downtown, the businesses downtown are already getting that advantage to them. And then I have to help pay for that again. Right, along with the TIFs too. You got those advantages. You never got a TIF, did you? So, right. so those are just, it just seems like, and, and for me, I'll just say as cabin fever, it would be somewhat of a, a disadvantage for me to have a, an increased sales tax. So, uh, two, two quick points. The, the, the rental properties, are they considered commercial or residential for the, for the apartments? That are in with the apartments, the, yeah. like across the street apartments, or any of the apartments. Any apartments of the apartments are considered. Within... Any apartment is considered residential. Okay, even though it's for rent, commercial in Correct. that sense, it's still considered it's okay, residential. For, uh, so they would not be taxable under this special, I, under not, the special service right. district. But I think you bring up, you raise the right question: is what's the governance model? And this gets back to your point: if there's a special service district, who decides where, how that money is used and spent, right? And and when you're going to have different agree, or you're going to have but I assume to be disagreements between different property owners because of the issues you just, you just raised. How do you resolve those kind of issues? So the the I, I don't think we have answers to those questions. Dana has but. answers. <laughs> Mayor, members of the council, I think I can answer that question. I, in fact, the city has very limited, a uh, very limited role in a special services district. So our job is to administer that, and then we're a resource that when the businesses come together and they decide, are deciding about how, how they want to, we'll just call, allocate or distribute the tax um, or the service fee, and um, how long, here's the goals, here are the projects that they wanna do, how long would, what would that fee need to be, how long would, it, we would participate in helping the business community understand and. Um, work through those issues, but in terms of governance, the city would not have a role in that at all. It would be the business or the property owners to figure out how they want to do that. Correct. And would the business owners themselves be the one to draw the property line or the boundaries of the service district? Uh, Council Member Gregory, Mayor, members of the council, they would propose that now the city would have to accept that. You have a role in accepting that you, that these boundaries make sense and, and but so under that scenario, Jeff's could be exempt from that? That is correct. Okay. Can I ask a, another question? This is about that special service district, so we, we might be way out of bounds on this because we're talking local option sales tax, but have we done any kind of an estimate? So this special service district is businesses voting to tax themselves a certain percentage. Have we done any modeling as to what 10% or 5% or 1% looks like around how much revenue that would raise? Um, in the sales tax or the, the, the special McMillan, tax, right council but, McMillan, um, Mayor, but, Mayor. but the special services district is actually an increase on their property tax it doesn't have to be so there's some latitude within the statutory language for these districts that says if you want to treat it like a property tax you can but those in the district could also say, just send us an invoice twice a year, or it becomes part of our utility bill. So there's some flexibility with how that gets paid. It doesn't have to be property tax-like. So there is some flexibility for that. So to say it's gonna go up five, what will it look at 5% or a 10%, you, it's kind of hard to make that determination because really what you're doing, again, you, you're gonna have specific things that you wanna fund. And I'm gonna just pick some random things. So let's say there's a, an electronic sign, entrance monument sign for the downtown business district and some really cool enhanced landscaping, streetscaping things and maybe snow and ice removal and winter lighting. Um, that, and those are the four things that the service district's gonna fund. So we, we city would help the businesses say, here's how much we think that these things are gonna cost. Let's back that into what that service fee would be, have to be if you want this to expire in 10 years or 15 years, or maybe you just want this to be <clears throat> in place as an evergreen tax. In other words, until the community, the, 
that are within that district, those business owners act to terminate the special services district. So the special services, the retailers have to increase their prices to recover this. That's uh, the council theory. member vote, um, mayor, members of the council, or, or have a significant increase of business overnight. They wouldn't have to, but if I were a business owner, I certainly would do that. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen is the property owner is going to say, now I pay more in taxes. Mm -hmm. So depending on the contract, the renter is now going to have to pay their percentage of that yes, share. So it's yeah. going to be a, a domino's effect. And so in essence, the retailer, the, the renter is going to probably end up having to pay more money. So it's either an increase in sales tax uh, with the optional sales tax that has a discriminatory problem with certain retailers, or it's the service district which puts a downright ta tax tax on the businesses which they need to recover because mm -hmm. they have to. So that'll manifest itself in price increases. Mm -hmm. So how, but we have communities all over the state that have these things. Is it that? They're bigger. Uh, what's why is this looking so hard for us? Yeah. I think. Can I ask? Yeah. I, I personally think it's because, unfortunately, we've painted ourselves into a corner. There's really no place for any other businesses to add parking, right? So the decision that the council has to make, and hopefully everybody else, is: is it going to benefit the landowner? in his pocketbook or the consumer. I mean, because the consumer is going to end up paying the extra cost, small or not. Yeah. My problem with it is, is that cost benefits the landowner because he hasn't had to pay anything the, the parking to begin with. So, I mean, I'd love you guys to buy my parking lot. You maintain it. You plow it. And I'd love that. That would be a great so deal for me. The, the, I've heard that. From other business owners too, that that because of their business, they don't want to say anything publicly because they're retail and they don't want to uh, uh, pick sides, so to speak. So I appreciate you coming in and being honest about it. But there's a lot of them that don't like the fact that they uh, they view that they've been treated differently because of the fact that they haven't had government subsidies for their businesses. They built them on their own and they ran them on their own. So uh, you know, the the more I hear of both options, the less I like of each. The, it seems like there's discrimination in it, not intentional, but like you say, with the sales tax and retail businesses are already under tremendous pressure because of the online activities. Um, uh, and if you enforce that sales tax, other places in the country aren't doing that, well, we're putting you at a, even more of a disadvantage, which isn't, isn't something that I wanted to try to do here. I just wanted to look at options. And then you've got, if you look at the subsidy or the, the uh, I can just see the kind of debates that would happen as to what are we going to do and who's going to build what. Not an easy thing. Yeah. Um, and I have one other thing yeah, is, go ahead. has the council, and I hope the council will, have you sat back and looked now that any more development within this city, parking <laughs> is going to be dealt with differently, I hope? Because I know that there's a property owner that would love to take their grass area and build a new building without any more parking and are you going to continue to do that and that's kind of what's happened is it's kept going and going and going and now we're in a corner and if we're going to repaint everything i hope that you would paint it a different way well this is why in the last council meeting i specifically want to try to kill the shared parking uh, ordinance because i think that's what's caused all of these problems over the last decade we haven't gotten any money out of it. The city hasn't gotten any money out of it. It's only until recently where we've finally got some commitments for it. Uh, plus that in the ordinance itself, you read it, we charge $5,000 for a parking spot, yet it costs us probably $25,000. Now that'll vary depending on what you're doing exactly, but for sake of the discussion. It, it, we're I, I pay over that in snowplow when you pin it on the air. Uh, right. Well, you bring up other issues too as far as is uh, uh, advantages, right? The, um, to your question about uh, the parking, that's why I want to kill the shared parking ordinance because the, the parking ordinance is if you remove the shared parking ordinance, sp specify how much parking is required. 
now then if you you could always get into a discussion if a new building comes in uh, okay well this is what it requires for retail and the, and the formulas are all in there instead of cutting that back by half which is what the shared parking ordinance allows um, uh, to me I think you have to if some building comes in you, you, I think the council has to seriously consider requiring them to put in underground parking sufficient to handle the building size I mean I don't know how, how else you I do mean it. even for myself as our business has grown you know I have a lot more employees than what I had before well that's one vehicle per employee that comes so you take a business that hires two three more people now that's three more parking spots that I don't think is calculated into the right the deal yeah. so well the other I thing think too that we found out is is all of the patio space for the restaurants the I think we discovered that too not long ago where that wasn't factored in uh, as far as when you were figuring the amount of parking required so all of a sudden in this obviously you don't use them in the winter right but you have those parking spaces in the summer and if that wasn't factored into calculating the number of parking spots that just contributed to the problem even more well and then you in front of the noble lion you put that bump out you took three parking spots away from right there it didn't make sense we had everybody complain about parking and then you keep taking more away so I'm just saying as far as cabin fever goes I'm against the sales tax part of it because it it will affect us somewhat and you know it might be small but every time a fleet farm moves in we lose revenue every time another business does a new online business starts up we lose revenue and it, and it all it all counts so thank you yep. uh, appreciate Jeff, it Jeff Jeff raises some good questions there yep. and I'm gonna ask this and I think I already know the answer but uh, is there any way we can restrict it to food and beverage councilmember Gregory mayor members of the council yes you we can could. do that that surprises me that's not the answer I thought of. <laughs> it's called a um, special purpose tax okay. it has a similar pro process let me see if I can find it right here state statute and we've got it listed here if anybody wants to go out and look um, we can state statute authorizes cities to uh, do up to 1% for food and beverage interesting and how would we get uh, numbers for that um, could I would have to get go to the state and get the breakdown okay. um, That'd be we, we could do uh, that. that would be interesting yeah but I'll, I'll bet you that if it's it at 1% it was two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars for the whole city for, uh, I'll bet you the food and beverage alone is going to be far less than that whereas it, it almost gets to the point where it may not it may just become not even worth the time and effort to try to do it if I think it's gonna, I think it's worth calling out too that um, commercial businesses pay a higher rate of property tax than residential do to start with so I think we we're gonna double down on the people who are already paying more than that, that's only if we decide to go forward part Correct. of this is to Correct. look at all of these questions the pros and the cons and the benefits well and I think you know Jeff brings up a good point about parking we've had a lot of expansion in the downtown area and we undertook a very expansive parking study and that happened before all the businesses were open but I think we need to I think we need to circle back and answer that question how many spots are we short and is it are we actually short spots or are we just short spots in front of businesses right. so I think we just had a parking study right that told us that peak times if we were short and how much we were short right. I mean that we we got that answer so we have some peak times we have a bit of, of a problem but it gave us numbers we have a study sitting there that tells us how, how much we're short that's done right. Dana you don't want to do that again we just did it Dana council member vote me yes exactly yeah to, um, and I did have some excerpts and we can make the parking study available online um, as part of this so people can see the specifics there um, but uh, to council member votes point yes that that study that was conducted in 2018 and it was published in 2019 did indicate that the parking problem um, was um, at peak times on certain days and there are um, many times during weekdays that 
the parking, there's ample parking. And it did give some specific numbers, but I, I don't have them off the top of my head, but we can certainly link that to this information so everything's kind of together and people don't have to go searching for it. All right. Uh, uh, Mark, the owner of the Noble Lion. Thank you. Since we're talking about parking, you and I had a pretty lengthy conversation last car show night, and I've been saying this from the beginning about signage. Uh, the city spent some money and they put up some nice lit signs in front of all the public parking spaces. But as I iterated to you, there is no directional signage that leads people to these parking lots. I have people tell me they drive around in circles and they go around Winchester and Rye and they do it three times. They have no clue Row Street parking is behind there. I periodically walk out to the back of the parking lot and I will see five or six parking spaces back there. Meanwhile, somebody's just walked in and said it took them 10 minutes to find a parking spot because they do not know that sign is there. Hold, so Hold that thought. I just asked Dana about this the other day. Didn't you say that we're waiting on the state for Highway 5? Um, Mayor, members of the council, Mark, it, we do have directional signage off of Highway 5, but I think to your point, you're probably talking about once they're downtown, how do they find Well, the there parking? is one like right on the corner when you take a left at the Norderman building. I think there's a sign that says parking that way. Mm -hmm. um, but for instance, even like this lit sign right here, yep. I don't think people understand that that's public parking because it's attached to the apartments. Well, there's a big P there. Yeah, but 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 it looks like it's these right. these it's signs the right here. Though. It doesn't right. say there's not an arrow that says public park. People are stupid. You can put signs in front of their face and they walk right through them. You said that, not us. Yes. I mean, I have, please wait to be seated, and I have people walk in and go right to a table. Um, they, people pull on the door when it says, please use front door. I've had people walk in the kitchen and it says deliveries only. I mean, people don't read signs. So, I mean, you, you really almost have to hold their hand, but I do. I go out back and I see a lot of times, now car shows is an exception, um, you know, but there are, there are spaces and people just aren't aware. It, my business, Tom's business, and even Winchester and Rye are pulling people from different communities that haven't been here before. And so when they come from those different communities, they have no direction. Mm -hmm. And so they just take a right at the light because their Google pin is putting them right on, on Victoria Drive. All right. Um, the, we need to, to kind of, we kind of got off target. This is a special meeting where we really need to focus on well, we, sales it, tax. Well, we, yeah, it, it led towards parking, and so I right. thought I'd no, throw my two cents valid. in. I don't, yeah, you know. I don't want to cut you off. Those, no. those discussions are valid. And right. The points people are making are valid. My point is, is, is the, the council needs to stay on, tar right, right. Uh, on target just to comply with the law. I just, so. just one last thing. The, the, the study was done in the summer. It wasn't done in the winter when there's a lot of, par a lot of snow in the parking lot. So mm -hmm. that will have an effect on parking. Um, but I think you get that directional signage up and reevaluate how that parking situation is. My business hasn't dropped. It's increased. So people are still coming to the restaurant, right? right. Even with this parking problem. So I think directional signage, letting people know where it's at, I think then we reevaluate again, you know, do we really have a problem or is the problem that people just don't know where the parking is? The, uh, the, <clears throat> having been on that parking committee, the idea was that we were going to get signage that not only put parking signs by the parking lots, but there was going to be directional signage. Mm -hmm. So to me, as a person that sat there, I was expecting correct. Yeah, I think right. we all were. Yeah. I think we all were. And we don't have it in that, you're right. Mm -hmm. And you, you're right, you do need it. You need it every block has yep. to be a, a, an arrow with a sign. You need guys it, with, you know, those batons. The, so, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, let's, let, let's get off the parking and get back to the sales tax. The, yeah, the, so right, go ahead. Sorry, Mayor. Mark no, that's right. Council. I just want to say Mark's right on, on that snow removal. In fact, our new public works director, uh, for those that, that don't know, we have a new public works director, Dave Shoger, um, and he and I um, are having conversations about how do we maximize parking during the winter months and snow because we know that that snow gets moved. There may not be an answer that we want. We're trying to get, can we export that snow somewhere else? We don't know the answer to that right now. It's something that we are talking about. Um, to see if there are other options that would allow us to maximize those spots. So you, you nailed it. I heard there's people in Florida that wouldn't like the snow. <laughs> can, can we get them to come pick it up? Um, uh, back to the sales tax. The um, uh, business owners, I'd like to invite anybody that hasn't spo uh, spoken yet. Please, for the record. Sure. Uh, my name is Deep Baveja, and I represent a couple of retail businesses in town, the Shell Gas Station and the High Five Liquors. I 
don't want to take time. I just want to say I strongly oppose any sales tax added to any retail that I do. I, I don't say food and beverage. I don't say off-sale liquor. I don't say cigarettes. It's we are on highway. We get business from Waconia. We get business from Chaska. It's a penny business. I can give an example of off-sale liquors on Highway 5 in last one year. How many have gone out of business? Mm. 30, 40 percent stores, and they're falling still. Anything, dimes or nickels added to the price that puts it over 19 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, where the consumer is looking at, oh, at Target, I buy this product at 18.50, and here it's adding to 19 something. They, they, consumers pinching pennies, consumer looks, these all, Big stores, big box from Target to Total, you know, from gas companies, from holidays, you know, discounts, you know, it's it's consumer watches every dollar it spends. And anything I add, then the guy says, why don't I stop in Waconia? It's under 20 bucks over there. Here it's 20, 50. Over there it's 19.79. He sees that it's over $20 bill or under $20 bill product. So I, I don't want to give any explanations. If my voice as a business owner, I'm not going to, I, I, I really don't know. I'm not. Don't think I'm going to see any benefit from that tax to my business. I'm. I'm a few million revenue collection sales tax place. You know, they're like Jeff said. A lot of revenue you say are non-taxable services in the business. There are only few businesses that really revenue collection, and the tax is all gone. That revenue taxable liquor is already. I, I don't. Everybody's aware has extra sales tax on it. There's there's a state tax over the sales tax. And you add another person on that, you are looking over 10% on the liquor, on off-sale. Consumer, consumer looks and twice, how did it add up to that much? Then you have to tell them it's 10 and a half now. You know? So I, I just want to say that I strongly oppose. I don't think I'm going to see a single penny benefit to my business building ramp, you know, parking. I maintain my building. I maintain my lots. I plow my lots consistently, constantly. We have never had city funding to improve anything our lots. So I strongly want to oppose any tax on any of my services. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, the Do we need to have, uh, we could actually make a decision tonight, assuming there was a consensus on this, right? The Because uh, for the council, at this point, I've heard enough that I don't think either of these options are, uh, I'm glad we had the discussions, uh, but I don't think either option is viable. They're not going to raise revenue in a timely manner. We'd still have to borrow money. Um, uh, and I see more problems than being created through this process than uh, solutions. Um, so I, I, sitting here tonight, uh, I don't think I'm going to support either one of these. I think we'll just we'll do it through the normal revenue process and deal with the issues like we've been deal, uh, dealing with. Council, thoughts? I think this was a good exercise to go through. Yeah. We, needed, we needed to find out about this. We needed to understand it. So uh, I don't regret the fact we went down this road, but uh, I don't want to cause chaos and havoc and, right. uh, you know, create problems for our businesses. It was an interesting conversation. I did learn a lot. Um, I think you know, there's a few other things, the accounting of it. Uh, when we have people, vendors come in, they're responsible to collect this and pay it, uh, along with the wheelage or the the uh, the county tax we added on an extra half a percent, so there's a real accounting challenge to this. Not to mention the money we'd have to spend with the legislature trying to get this approved. It's a long and arduous part process. Right. Um, so the sales tax, it it just seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. Deb, I couldn't agree more. I do not know why we'd want to make the city of Victoria an outlier on taxes of any kind. So. So I move that we direct staff to drop both this and the uh, uh, business district. Did <laughs> I get it right this time? Service, special service. Special, uh, I, I move that we uh, direct staff to uh, drop both the sales tax, local sales tax option and the special district option um, uh, as we've got other options or we've got other uh, things to do. Was, can I get a second to that? Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, the special services was pretty much up to the business owners themselves if they want to pursue it. So I really don't think that's up to us to decide that. All right, I, I, uh, I'll withdraw the motion. We, will you withdraw your second? We'll just, uh, I move that we uh, direct staff not to pr further pursue the uh, local sales tax option. Can I get a second to that? Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Uh, all opposed? <laughs> okay, so we're going to drop that. Clarification? The, yes. Mayor, members of the council? Um, so for December 16th, part of the conversation was funding strategies for parking solutions. Did you still want to have that conversation and talk different other different strategies and we can explore what those might be and have a conversation about the types of parking solutions we want to continue to look at or um, did you want us to drop that piece altogether? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think we should drop the special service district too because that's going to create, I think, a lot of headaches. Council, do we want to table that or do we I want to drop that? Business decision. Does it have to come to us for some kind of an approval? Mayor, members of the council, a special service district Basically what you'd be doing if you direct us not to do anything, you're just telling us don't spend staff time on it. So um, and and so the business owners could the still business owners could come together and they decide that that's what they want to do. They could bring we something would back. so by statute again, if they get 25% of the people in what they define as being the district boundary, we are compelled to act. You council are compelled to act um, and uh, to say that we're we, this is a petition and now you have to consider this petition. And so um, until that happens, you can direct staff not to spend staff resources um, doing that. But the, again, the staff role would be to help them calculate, determine how do you calculate the, the taxes or how would that be allocated? Yep, got it. All right, so um, uh, I would move that we direct staff not to spend any more time uh, until such time as the business owners come back with something. Uh, can I get a second to that? Uh, point of order, should we mm -hmm. be voting formally? At oh, yeah, this is, this is, no, this is a special council meeting. We oh, yes, I'm sorry, okay, I thought it was a workshop. It's, nope. list, it's listed as a workshop on the uh, city site, but. Mayor, members of the council, I, and I'm gonna look at Cindy because our attorney's not here. I believe that you're not prohibited from taking action at a council workshop for transparency, purposes sometimes it we prefer to do it during a meeting um, but you can certainly take action if you choose to take action and give direction right and the, the point here is, is since we're in the discussion the point here is if the business owners get together and, and want to do something they can bring it back and we we would take it up there right. anyways yes. so I'm just thinking that's the general consensus on that uh, yeah okay so the uh, we've got a motion to direct staff not to spend any more time on this go ahead uh, may <laughs> Sorry, um, Mayor, members of the council still need clarification on the, do you want us to bring, do you want, we've got a parking study that's listed I'm gonna out come to that. and stuff. Okay, you're gonna get there. I'm, I'm gonna get there. Um, uh, so we're back to the special service district. We have a motion to direct staff not to spend any more time with that. Is there further discussion by the council? Until they need your help, you said. Correct, until such time as the business owners bring something back. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. Oh. I'll second it. Oh, sorry. The, now we have it. The, uh, any further discussion, Council? All right, all in, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all opposed, none. The, uh, so uh, you've got the direction. Now as far as the parking, that mm -hmm. still has to be discussed, right? And, and there's options and the Council's previously discussed the old parking, or I'm sorry, the old uh, uh, public works. Um, and we've talked about various funding strategies. Mm -hmm. I think that parking discussion still needs to occur. Council, is there a concern? Yeah, I. Sorry. Go ahead. I would say let's define our problem. Let's define our parking problem. Let's find out how many parking spaces we're short. I mean, we've got we've got a lot of stuff that involves parking, and we've talked about reviewing the parking ordinance. We want to know how many park parking spots we're short. And so I would say as part of that conversation, we should have that information. I think we have the solution to the snow removal. If we get rid of the buildings in the old public works site in the wintertime, we could dump snow there. If we don't convert it to more surface parking. Right. Right. That's right. part of the parking discussion. But it's, it's a, it would be a big lot, and it's not that far to, to uh, mm -hmm. move snow over there and get it out of here so we got par parking. Yeah. I, the... Low torch is melting and all, that's not gonna work. <laughs> um, so Dana, I think there's a consensus from the council, we mm -hmm. still have the parking discussion, um, but Mayor these two funding options are just not gonna be yep. part of that. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council, another point of clarification for me, we, on um, at our last budget meeting, we talked about um, bringing back this, or looking at the parking ordinance in the 
uh, quarter one. You won, correct. So do you want this just right now? I've got the schedule for December 16th, but it's going to be a little premature if you want to roll it into kind of a bigger, like we're looking at a parking, parking ordinance and it probably makes some sense to kind of have all the pieces of information and look at everything together. And that would be quarter one next year. I, I'm fine with that. The We've got a pretty full schedule because of budgeting and other things we have to do at the end of the year. Council, uh, are we fine with pushing that into the first quarter? I'd be okay. Right? Yes. Yeah, I think there's a consensus to do that. So do that. if we can get this scheduled um, as soon as we can, though, um, because the business owners, everybody wants to talk about parking, we need to get a solution. And, Mayor, members of the council, if I may, um, there are things that we can continue to pick away at. And um, we can look into directional signage and we'll follow up with MnDOT to get the signage off the foot. We have no idea where that is in the process. So there, we will continue to bring in. If there are things that you haven't already given direction on, we'll have those conversations. We won't wait until quarter one. If we find it's something that we feel might benefit um, our businesses downtown, we will certainly bring that forward if we feel that it's a policy decision to be made. Yeah, the council jump in if-, if I, I think, you know, the parking's, there's two things about the parking problem. Number, number one, it's chronic. And uh, number two, it's complicated. And to me, that says there's not gonna be one solution. There's gonna be five. And we got, you know, this business of trying to think up the, the, the silver bullet that's going to save us all, forget it. It's directional signs might be a big one. Uh, these signs we just put up, they've helped already. And it's going to be stuff like that that we keep working on. So, you know? Council, jump in if, if, if you think I'm not summarizing this right. I thought the council already approved all the directional signs. Would you please check with the business owners if that's not what, yeah. let's get that fixed if it's not right. Yeah. Mayor, members of the council, I think what I heard here this evening is these signs that we've got right out our window here are are great and they're they're doing their work, but they're not perfect. And so perhaps looking at maybe uh, a supplement to those signs, like what would it what would it take and what would it cost for us to get some arrows to kind of show well, people? And not just are, arrows on, on signs. You need arrows on every block. On every, yes, every block. And we can and look see, into that. Parking is this way. So, parking, or it's two arrows, one's going this way and one's going that way, but they know they can go mm -hmm. find some parking. So, Council, I'd like a consensus here to, to uh, direct Dana to work with the business owners to do whatever tweak she feels is reasonable and prudent uh, on her own. I don't think this has to come back to the Council. We've already directed that that get done. Um, any objections? None. None? No objection. All right, so if you want to get with the business owners, find out where we can make improvements and, and just get it done. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also get an update out to the uh, VBOA about uh, the state and where they're at and when we think we may get those signs on the uh, Highway 5 put on. I think everybody here understands that the city can't do that. The, the, the state has to do that. Okay. Um, council, uh, staff, anything else? Audience. Right, right. Audience. I was going to go there next. Okay, sorry. The um, business owners, anybody else have any other final comments? All right. Well, if, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, Council, can I get a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Uh, thank you. Second, please. Second. Uh, discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>